Greg Schutfeld's comments cut through the noise, shedding light on the dire need for personal responsibility and ethical leadership. His criticism of Tim Walls and Kamala Harris isn't just justified. It's a wake-up call. In times of crisis, principled and determined, leadership is non-negotiable. When we look at Waltz and Harris, we're confronted with what many see as incompetence and irresponsibility. Well, you know, um, I, I'm always interested in hearing the repeat phrases that come up when something happens and you could see the coordination, for example, all of a sudden the word weird popped up last week mm -hmm. over and over again. Idea. And what's the word now? And Jessica used it, Midwestern. So Ezra mm -hmm. Klein says, Tim Walsh is the Midwestern dad, Dems need. And then Jessica mentions the Midwestern values. If you Google Midwestern, you're going to get Tim Walsh. So what is Midwestern? Is Midwestern looking at riots? and saying it was caused by the lack of equity and inclusion. Is that Midwestern? Is, causing, is calling those events exciting? And that reflects a sense of optimism. Is that uh, Midwestern? Uh, he abandoned lawful citizens to gain favor with the lawless mob. By stereotyping the riots as an activity of an oppressed group, he destigmatized criminal activity. This is a huge thing. And essentially, he gave criminals more rights at the very worst time. He made them special and possessing of more rights than the victims that had to endure that. As for the, you know, the National Guardsmen, when he said to, you know, they shouldn't come here because they're just 19 year old cooks. Well, at least the only thing they're burning are food. You know, as opposed to the 19 year olds burning down in Arby's. I think this is a match made in heaven, you know, or hell. You have Waltz and Harris, you know, they're the, you know, he defended the burning of his cities. She helped bail out the arsonists. They're the woke Bonnie and Clyde. They're the left's <laughs> Laurel and Hardy. Yeah, I, you know, I, I mean, it actually makes perfect sense. Meanwhile, and I, I, go, I have to return to this idea of giving special rights to a group. You know, every victim during that period of time, black, white, Asian, old in, in, in that state was a unique person. They weren't a group. Therefore, therefore, they weren't conferred special rights. Right. And so the cowardice of Walton Harris had them bow to the individual criminals because they were seen under the group of the oppressed. Meanwhile, individual victims became subservient to the special rights of the people they, that were preying upon them. That's the thing. It's only one thing. It's only one thing. All those other things you mentioned are disgusting. He is a snitch. That's gross. He's a male Karen with power and a pot belly. But you know what? That defense of what went on post George Floyd, that everybody needs to know who that is. Gutfeld's remarks paint a vivid picture of failure. In a situation akin to civil war, the public resonates with his portrayal of Waltz and Harris as facilitators of chaos and illegality. These leaders, perceived as putting the interests of criminals over law-abiding citizens, advocate for the destructive and then push for their release. This is Stance starkly contrasts with the conservative values of law and order, personal responsibility, and the protection of individual rights. Gutfeld's comparison of Waltz and Harris to notorious duos like Bonnie and Clyde, or the bumbling Laurel and Hardy, underscores their inefficiency and the damage their actions inflict on social stability and justice. Rather than addressing the genuine needs and safety of voters, these politicians are seen as pandering to specific groups and acting rashly. They bypass the obligation to protect all citizens, choosing instead a path that exacerbates social unrest. The critical descriptions Gutfeld offers highlight significant flaws in their leadership qualities and decision-making processes. By emphasizing their support for arsonists and rioters, he portrays them as leaders lacking the resolve to make tough, principled decisions in chaotic times. This perceived weakness and lack of determination can erode public trust and faith in their leadership capabilities. Furthermore, the comparison to Bonnie and Clyde casts them in a light of recklessness and irresponsibility, further damaging their credibility. The public values Gutfeld's straightforward criticism as it echoes their concerns about the handling of civil unrest and its broader implications for law and order. For many, Walds and Harris symbolize a Democratic Party more invested in social justice rhetoric than in practical effective governance.